I need some traction. You need some traction. Hey everybody, I'm Marissa Chaco and I'm going to talk about bots. Uh, so first, does anybody here work for Facebook or Google? If you do, raise your hand. No? Okay. Um, so because of you that don't work at Facebook or Google, you guys are in a little bit of trouble. And the reason is that users are spending 80% of their time in apps that aren't yours. And the average mobile user downloads just zero apps per month. So how are you going to grow when you're competing with millions of other apps for just 20% of the pie? The answer, in my opinion, is bots. So today I'm going to argue that bots offer the greatest opportunity for growth, engagement, and customer relationships that we've seen. I've been in tech for over 10 years, and most recently I've been building a bot called MarsBot. MarsBot's a bot that recommends food and nightlife places via SMS. And I've learned a lot from building MarsBot, and I want to kind of share why I think bots are going to really improve your companies. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, when I talk about a bot, I'm really talking about any two-way conversational dialogue between a bot and a piece of software or a software and a human being. So regardless of if there's a human back there, I'm really looking at software or human inter interfaces. So why am I so amped up about bots? Well, I'll give you three reasons I'm going to talk about today. The first is bots are a huge growth opportunity. As users start to experience app fatigue and we have more bleak competition uh, in the app space, bots are really a way to break through. Second, bots can offer a dramatically better experience than web or mobile by simplifying very complex tasks. And finally, bots can lead to better user engagement and loyalty with your company by forming these emotional connections with your users. So first, let's talk about growth. It's the reason we're all here today at Traction, and I believe bots offer the greatest opportunity for rapid growth. As I mentioned earlier, the app race has sort of already been won by folks like Facebook and Google. Power is really concentrated in the top five apps, and very few apps have really grown to that sort of scale. And before I make you too depressed about the state of the world, there obviously is a huge opportunity in the form of messaging apps. Uh, if we look at Facebook, WhatsApp, Kick, there's been a really massive growth in engagement. Um, users can spend upwards of 30 sessions per day in a single messaging app. And that gives us a huge opportunity to connect with these users. Likewise, we're seeing new devices coming to the market like Google Home. And these are more than just gadgets. They're an opportunity to interact with users in a new environment. Your product is no longer trapped behind a screen and buttons. With the success of Amazon Echo, I'm thinking there'll probably be a lot more of these connected home devices coming out. And while you may be asking, what about discovery? That's sort of the big elephant in the room of like, how are bots going to be discovered right now? And I agree, there's a huge, uh, huge play that's yet to be determined there. But I've got faith for two reasons. The first is we've already seen very closed platforms like Apple opening up with their Siri SDK. And the second is that messaging is inherently viral. And it really just lends itself to growth and engagement. The second reason that I'm so bullish about bots uh, is that bots can deliver a seamless, rich user experience that was previously fragmented and complex. Uh, let's take a simple example. So I have a friend named Eve. And when Eve gets home from work and she's tired, she wants to put on some James Brown. Uh, so what does Eve do to listen to some James Brown? Well, she opens up her phone. She navigates to Spotify, she searches for James Brown, presses play, but she's not done yet because then she has to go to her settings, has to tap on Bluetooth, and then finally tap on her speakers to connect. Simple, right? That was seven steps. And that didn't even touch on unlocking the phone or navigating within Spotify. Now let's contrast that with what would happen if Eve had an Amazon Echo. She'd just say, Alexa, play James Brown on Spotify. And that's it. And that's why bots are so powerful. They can take a complex task that previously required interacting with multiple devices or multiple apps and turn those into a simple voice command. And the reality is that users don't love your app. They love listening to James Brown. So the faster you can get them to that experience, the better off you'll be. In addition to handling complexity well, bots should also be easier to learn than traditional interfaces. 
If you think about how we interact with devices today, we're translating our goals into system affordances or things that the app lets us do. And if we go back in history a bit, the rise of the PC can largely be attributed to the GUI or the graphical user interface, which allowed folks who didn't want to memorize command prompts to point and click with objects they saw on the screen. And while we've come a long way in making these interfaces more usable, uh, they still have a steep learning curve. If any of you guys have switched from a PC to a Mac or an iPhone to an Android, you've experienced this pain in trying to figure out where things are. And the reason being is that we have to translate our goals into what the system allows. But with bots, we can flip that paradigm. We can allow users to just tell us their goals directly. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch Seinfeld, but uh, there's this example from uh, when Kramer's pretending to be Mr. Movie Phone, and George is trying to type in the uh, digits that correspond to the movie he wants. And in the end, Kramer's just like, why don't you just tell me the name of the movie? Um, and that's like so much easier, right? Um, it's this ability to simplify those complex tasks and allow users to talk in terms of goals rather than navigation that gives bots a huge advantage over traditional apps. The third reason I think we should be investing heavily in bots is the opportunity to form stronger relationships with our users by creating this emotional connection. If we back up a second, let's talk about anthropomorphism. It basically means giving human characteristics to animals, events, objects, or software. And we do it as humans because it allows us to understand complex things. And in the realm of technology, we've already been treating computers like humans for a long time. They have a memory, they catch viruses, they go to sleep, they speak a language. And with bots, we're really taking this human-computer relationship one step further. I want to share with you this fascinating study that was conducted 20 years ago in the UK. Researchers instructed participants to interact with three different experiences, and their goal was to get $100 out of their checking account. The first experience was a standard ATM. The second was a bank teller or a cashier. And the third was a sort of Frankenstein financial user interface with a personality that they called Granny. And Granny was this goofy drawing of a grandma that guided you through your ATM tasks, which I know what you guys are all probably thinking. A grandma trying to navigate you through an ATM sounds like a nightmare. Um, but the results were pretty interesting. After users experienced all three of these, uh, engage with all three of these experiences, they were asked to list out adjectives to describe each one. And research exam researchers examined and categorized these responses, and they saw an obvious pattern with the ATM. People usually uh, associated uh, functional benefits. For example, it's reliable, it's mechanical, it's efficient. What was most surprising was how participants described granny in contrast to the human cashier. Researchers found that granny was described using more social attributes like chatty, personal engaging, than the human cashier. Now let that sink in for a second. Granny, this Frankenstein ATM with a personality, was judged as more social than an actual human being. So that just like blows my mind. I thought that was hysterical. Um, and not only that, but the human cashier was described as bored or sad or uninteresting. So what does that mean for you in the context of bots? Well, first, this means there's an opportunity to create both functional value by doing what your product does well and create social value by giving it this engaging persona. And this combination will lead to greater engagement and loyalty than either one of those alone. So giving your software a personality will help you develop this strong emotional connection with your users. And while it's still early days for bot developers, we've already seen very high engagement with bots, two to three times traditional push channels like email or push notifications. This indicates that the two-way dialogue offers a greater opportunity for us to engage with our audience and build a stronger relationship with users than ever before. I'm hoping by now anyone who was on the fence about bots and thought it was all hype is a little bit convinced, and maybe even some of you guys will text your engineers during break and find out where you are on building bots. So that brings me to my next point. Um, how do you build an awesome bot? What should you be thinking about? So my first tip is fail gracefully. Um, I love this video, it's from uh, DARPA Robot Fails, if any of you guys have seen those. Um, just like you provide feedback mechanisms in your app when users do something they shouldn't, you should be providing the same feedback mechanisms when your bot does something uh, it shouldn't be doing. 
Users often mistakenly think bots can do a lot more than they can because bots speak like humans because humans write the dialogue for bots, but bots can't understand that way. So if we take, for example, something we did in MarsBot, um, we want to separate out the failure reasons. So was it background noise? Did they not use the right keywords? Was it outside the domain of expertise? It's important to clarify the failure so users can correct the issue. In this case, we changed kind of what was a useless error message, sorry, I don't understand, into something that guesses what the user was trying to do, which was find sushi, and suggest a specific syntax that would actually correct the issue. And this lets the user kind of get out of their predicament. My second tip is to build the simplest thing first, or kind of the microbot. While apps provide physical constraints and visible clues as to what they can do, bots provide far fewer, which can leave them very error prone. As a developer, your job should be to educate users in terms of your domains of expertise. Like you would never ask the kayak app to what the weather was in San Francisco. You would never ask the weather app the cheapest flight to New Orleans. But bots are a whole different story. And users tend to perceive them more like Google search, where anything is possible until you specify. So focus on your domain of expertise and having a very high success rate there before you branch out and try and do everything the user will ask for. And my final tip is obvious, but I've seen folks make this mistake already. Don't rebuild the wheel. Leverage your existing strengths. For example, don't build your own bot platform. They already exist, and they have hundreds of millions of users. So take advantage of the growth opportunities there, where your existing and prospective users are already spending tons of time. When we built MarsBot, we decided not to build our own in-app chat, uh, but we took advantage of SMS. It was a natural channel for dialogue, and we knew SMS would be on the home page of almost all of our users. Likewise, don't build things you don't have to. So at Foursquare, we had great natural language processing capabilities around food and drink and location. And rather than try and build up our uh, capabilities in other areas and handle really complex responses, we decided to focus on what we do best, which was providing personalized recommendations. And we're relying on open source libraries to enhance those capabilities in the future. I'd assume most developers here are in a similar place and don't have the data resources of a Microsoft or a Google or an Apple, so don't waste your time with that. They're giving theirs away for free, so take advantage of the resources going into the ecosystem. I'd like to end with one of my favorite quotes. Uh, it's by Nicholas Negroponte, who is one of the founders of the MIT Media Lab. And he said, it's not computer literacy we should be working on, but sort of human literacy. Computers have to become human literate. So in conclusion, I hope I've convinced you all why bots are more than just hype. Bots represent a huge opportunity for us to grow our products, deliver seamless experiences, and foster stronger relationships with our users. I hope you join us in the bot revolution. I'm Marissa. Thanks for your time. I need some traction. You need some traction.